Now let's go to the guidelines. What does the newest guidelines of 2021 tell us about the valve morphology with echocardiography suspicious of aortic stenosis? Well, of course, initially we have to assess the gradients. If you go to the right side and we have a high gradient aortic stenosis with a high flow velocity of four meters per second, and a mean pressure gradient of above or 40 millimeters of mercury and a normal flow status, we have a true severe aortic stenosis. If we do have a high flow status, we have to think about how to reverse it. Going to the left side, we see that there is a low gradient aortic stenosis with a gradient below 40 millimeters of mercury and a maximum velocity below four meters per second. And we have an aortic valve area below or one square centimeter, we need to move on. If the aortic valve area is above one square centimeter, and that's rather important, you can call it a moderate aortic stenosis. So if all the measurements fit and the gradient is below 40 and the aortic valve area is 1.2 square centimeters, for example, it is really a true moderate aortic stenosis. If it is below, we have to check the blood pressure and in our ecolab we always try to measure the blood pressure also in a routine exam, especially when we do stress echo, of course, that we have to. But in this case, the blood pressure is important to exclude measurement errors. If you have a normal blood pressure, you have to define the flow state. So is there low flow, so stroke volume index below or 35 milliliters per square meters? Or is there a normal flow, so above 35 milliliters per square meter? Continuing, we stick to the left side initially. If we have a low flow in the region below 35 milliliters per square meters, but a normal ejection fraction of above or 50%, we should go the integrated approach where we need the calcium scoring and the CT scan. If we go back here and have a normal flow, so above 35 milliliters per square meter, we also can say this is a truly severe aortic stenosis, so we do not need a further workup. In this situation, as we discussed before, when you have this low flow and a low ejection fraction, so below 50%, we need to see if there is flow reserve, so contractility reserve, and if it is not present, so even with stress echocardiography, we do not see a rise in the gradients, we also go to the CT scan. If we have a flow reserve and it is a aortic valve area below one square centimeter throughout the stress echo, we go for the true severe aortic stenosis. If the aortic valve area improves and it is above one square centimeters, we have this pseudo severe aortic stenosis. Here you see the overview of the guidelines. You can check out this graph and all the measurements as well in the Guidelines, it's a very nice paper to read from the ESC of 2021. Now, we talked about the hyperdynamic state. What is a hyperdynamic state? First of all, if you have a relevant aortic regurgitation, because there's a volume shift. So you have the flow through the valve, but also the backflow, which leads to this hyperdynamic state because of the volume overload, because there is relevant aortic regurgitation. If you have fever, if, if there's a patient who is septic with anemia, hyperthyreosis, pregnancy, all those reasons can lead to a hyperdynamic state. And before you evaluate the aortic valve stenosis, there shouldn't be a hyperdynamic state because it could lead to overestimation of the gradients and the severity of the aortic valve. Now, something which is very often asked, and it's very important, how to actually write a report. First of all, describe the valve with the morphological findings. Is it tricuspid, bicuspid, even unicuspid or quadricuspid? Describe the valve and the valve borders. Are they smooth? Are they sclerotic? Are they, are they mild, moderately, severely calcified? Describe the opening. Is it preserved? Is it reduced? Measure the gradients and grade the stenosis. Also includes the LVOTDM and the stroke volume index in your report because everyone else can see what you measured and adapt it in their own measurements if they are not sure to have a reassurance if they are measuring correctly. And then if the aortic valve 
area is below one square centimeters in case of a normal ejection fraction with a mean pressure gradient below 40 millimeters of mercury, always go back and reevaluate. So measure especially the LVOT simply again. So it has to be in the range of 20 millimeters. So everything in between 80 to 22 is probably normal. If it is below 18 millimeters, the patient has to be rather small and slim. If it is a large patient, of course, it can exceed 22 millimeters. So also 24 millimeters, 25 millimeters can be seen. But if you have, for example, a large male patient, it is two meters in, in, in height, and you have an LVOT of 14 millimeters, definitely something is off. So always compare the LVOT with the person you're actually scanning and adjust it to the body surface area. What the most likely measurement will be if you have a mean pressure gradient below 20 millimeters of mercury, that practically rules out a severe aortic stenosis. So if you have a mean pressure gradient below 20 millimeters of mercury and still measurements are off, go again back to measuring the LVOT. Very often the LVOT is truly the problem. And I want to emphasize again, as we have seen in Erna, this is a severely hypertrophied ventricle. We did think about amyloidosis, especially with the additional information of strain imaging, also showing that the global longitudinal strain is definitely reduced. There was no amyloidosis present, but still strain imaging gives a lot of additional information and should be part of this exam. We will continue with more valvular pathologies and with the compact echo course in the next lectures.